So you have been having a great time starting in October with all that Halloween candy. Then came Thanksgiving with all the delicious foods and treats and homemade goodies. And then Christmas hit and you partook of your Aunt Jane's favorite pastries as well as the stuffing and the gravy and that delicious homemade rolls. And today, we pay the piper because you guys, today we stepped on the scale and oh my gosh, I've gained 20 pounds, right? So now you're looking to find a diet that you can go in for a new year's resolution for a new you in 2023. How are you gonna do that? You guys, come back and we're gonna talk the ketogenic lifestyle. everyone, welcome to Loving It on Keto. I'm Wendy, the cameraman is Harry, and our little dog is little Sally. And we have been doing the ketogenic lifestyle now for several years. Harry has lost 93 pounds. I lost 56 pounds. I originally was 282 pounds, and I have lost over 106 pounds total. But I wanna to talk today about the ketogenic lifestyle or keto diet or low carb diet. Now, a lot of you are brand new to the ketogenic lifestyle. This is your very first day and you have been Googling keto and there are so many buzzwords out there that you do not understand that are white noise that blah, 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 that you're trying to wade through in order to find the correct protocol for you. You've never done low carb, you've never done keto before, and you are a carbohydrate addict. You're a sugar addict. You love the, the full sugar Coca-Cola and pops, right? But you're looking for something to help lose weight, feel great, help with your blood panel if you've taken one lately and you're seeing that's all wacky and all over the place. You're trying to get rid of the battle of the bulge, right? Those sedentary saddlebags right here. And you want to know more about it. So I'm gonna to try to wipe out some of the white noise for you who are brand new who are new to the ketogenic diet or new to low carb and help you out best I can because there are so many buzzwords. There's low carb, there is keto, there is ketovore, there is carnivore, there is BBBE, there's PhD, there is PSMF, and there is high fat, you know, low protein, high protein, modified fat. There's all of these things out there there are deri derived from and pretty much mean the same thing. You want your body to start burning its own fat and the fat that you put into your mouth for fuel. You no longer want to eat sugars and carbohydrates which turn into sugar and turn into glucose to be floating around and your body dependent on that for fuel. So what I suggest are these things. I'm gonna give you some do's and I'm gonna give you some don'ts. We're gonna start with the don'ts first, okay? And the things you need to rid your house of and your cupboards of and the things you need to bring into your life. So let's get started with that. First of all, you need to get rid of all of the white things in your cupboard, the pastas, the rice, the wheat, the flour, wheat flour, the oats, that oatmeal that grandma always fed to you every day and said it was good, eat your oatmeal, all of the boxed cereals, anything that is sugar, grain derived, wheat, rice, oats, you wanna get rid of all those things. If you have friends, family, shift them out of the house, it makes it so much e easier. No more sugar. Get rid of sugar, brown sugar. Get rid of uh, agave, nectar, honey. Get rid of anything that is a sugar-related product. And there are 52 different names for sugar. 
So you can Google name different sugars and you will come up with a horrendous list and you're gonna be amazed because the next thing you're going to do is you are gonna look at the oils and the margarines that are in your refrigerator and in your cupboards and you're going to throw them away or give them away respectively. No more canola oil, which is also called rapeseed oil. No more corn oil. No more light oil. No more Crisco. Okay? None of the seed oils because we're gonna go, I, I just, we're not gonna go into the science yet. I'm just telling you these are bad for you. I need you to get rid of the margarine because you're gonna start eating real butter. Real delicious, mouth-watering, melt in your mouth, on your plate, on your food, butter. Because you know what? Butter is not only better, butter is best. Get rid of the canola oil, the light margarines. All of those things need to go bye-bye. Walk them to your neighbor. Give them to another family member who would welcome those things with open arms because for going forward, you're going to be cooking and using real butter. You can either have salted butter or the sweet butter, which is the unsalted butter made with sweet cream. You are going to be eating lard lard right get rid of Crisco start using lard bacon grease tallow the only seed oils that you should be using if you need them are coconut oil a hundred percent virgin olive oil because olives and avocado oil hundred percent avocado oil because those are seeds I mean those are fruits pardon me and those are the only seed oils that you should have during a ketogenic diet because those oils are good for you. They are minimally processed. Um, if it's 100% virgin olive oil, it's cold pressed, fresh fruit, the olives are fruit, squeezed and pressed and the oil that comes out of them. The other oils are highly refined. They go through high heat. Some of it's rancid. There's all kinds of reasons why we're not going to use those. But I'm trying to keep it, I'm putting blinders on you, putting keto blinders on you right now, because I'm trying to take out the white noise. So we're getting rid of all the grains, you know, all of the sugars, any cereal you have, because cereals are grains, we're getting rid of those. Now, we're getting rid of all of the seed oils and we're getting rid of uh, your margarines and we're adding back butter, okay? Now, something else you get to have is all of the meats. You go to the butcher, all of the meat, whether it comes from a cow, a sheep, a goat, a lamb, a hog, a pig, a turkey, and the fowl, all of the birds, the turkeys, the quail, the pheasant, the fowl, um, chicken, the birds you can have. All of the fish that swim in the sea. All of the um, little critters like shrimp and oysters and lobsters and crustaceans you can eat. Now, you want to eat minimally processed more whole foods, things you get at the outside of your grocery aisle, over in the vegetable section. You can still have vegetables. This is not about eating a stick of butter and a hunk of meat every single day. And you can never look a tomato in the face again. That is not what the ketogenic lifestyle is. You can have all of the vegetables that grow above ground and you can Google or go to Reddit and get the list of all of the low carb vegetables. The thing about keto is, is there are no keto foods. Keto is a ketogenic state that your body is in by lowering the carbs down to about 20 grams or less, raising, eating your protein to a moderate level, and then adding fats on top of that to, for satiety, putting a pat of butter on your vegetables, etc and not eating, don't get in the loop of eating anything that says 
keto, this is keto bread. This is keto ice cream. This is keto gum. This is keto, you know, everything's marked keto now in the grocery store. And all that means is they've either added a ton of fibers to that. I want you to look at the labels on every single item that you start buying now. You can have any of the thick, rich, delicious dressings that you miss, like Marie's ranch dressing, chunky lighthouse blue cheese dressing, you know, in the refrigerated section, but you need to read the label on the back. It will tell you how many total carbs there are. One to two carbs per two tablespoons is about where you need to be. If you can get zero carbs, that's even better. Your meats in the butcher section are probably gonna be zero carbs. The chicken, the turkey, the beef, the pork, the lamb. If you go to the deli section where there are cured meats or um, lunch meats, you need to ask for the carb count per serving and figure out what the per serving slice is because you are only gonna be counting carbs going forward. Right now, in the beginning, that's what you need to concentrate on, right? So if you read a shopping list, if you read all of the vegetables that are out there and you pick the few that you like, and where you don't have to have a huge ton of them, you can have just a serving of them. And if you don't like vegetables, don't eat them. If you don't like chicken, don't eat it. But I'll tell you something about chicken and about turkey and about the fowl. Try to get it with the skin on. <gasps> Did I just say eat chicken with skin on? You mean I can't have my boneless, I don't have to have the dry boneless skinless chicken breast anymore? No, you don't have to. You can if you want to, but you can have those nice fat thick thighs with the skin on them. You can put them in an air fryer. You can broil them or bake them. Get that crispy skin, salt it and eat it with some vegetables, a little cauliflower broccoli with a little bit of butter. Oh yeah, you can have those things. Cheese. You want to go for the cheeses that are the hard blocks of cheese. The firmer the cheese, the better. You do not want American cheese. You need to read the ingredients, and if there's a line of ingredients besides, you know, milk or cream, salt, four or five ingredients, and the carbs are not zero, maybe one carb per slice, sometimes two, nothing above that, that's what you need to be doing because you, throughout your whole entire day of eating, need to track just the carbs, just the carbs. And when you get to 20 total grams of carbs in a day, you stop. Now, remember that creamer you were drinking in your coffee? That um, coffee creamer that is made with soybean oil and a whole bunch of additives that doesn't have milk in it or cream in it anywhere? You need to take and toss those or give them to the neighbor and you need to get thick, rich, heavy whipping cream. You mean I can have thick, rich, heavy whipping cream? Yes, you can. Now, you need to read the back of it. Make sure there's no, in the ingredients, what, what it's made out of, and make sure that there's only one gram of carb per tablespoon or teaspoon and count your grams because you're not gonna just pour it into your cup. You're also gonna start measuring especially the items that you choose to eat on a daily basis. So some things you may want to get, they're very inexpensive, is a food scale. Let me show you mine. This is a food scale. You can get it on Amazon and you just put it on and you can do it in um, here. You can do it in ounces. You can change it to grams. And they have the ones, if you're over in Europe somewhere, you can get the ones that do it in your, um, the way your metric or imperial system that you use. 
You're going to count and measure your cup of vegetables. You're going to measure your slices of cheese because you're going to write on a pad of paper how many carbs you're eating during the day. Had one slice of cheese, it says it's one gram of carbs, put a one down. It says you're having cauliflower, you're having a cup of cauliflower, it says two grams. I'm not sure if that's right, so let's take a look. So here's where I would go. Ingredients, cauliflower. Serving size, half a cup. Total carbohydrates, four. So I can have 20 grams in an entire day. And then I check it that way. Eggs are about 0.6 grams, so I count my eggs as one, just to make sure. So if you have three eggs, and two slices of bacon, and your bacon is a carb for two or three slices, you would count that, right? One, two, three, four, five. You want um, a piece of, uh, you want a hamburger patty, which is zero, and you want to add some, uh, half a cup of cauliflower with this, or two huge cups full of uh, field lettuce. And you need to start reading the packages. You need to start reading the labels. You wanna get minimally processed. You don't wanna get caught up in something that's got this many ingredients, right? Half of the package on the back has that. And then you go from there. You wanna also start using salt. I know all the doctors, I know all of the uh, information out there says you want to limit your salt. You have a heart issue. You're, you know, you're, you're doing diuretics or whatnot, and your doctor says, "Oh my gosh, stay away from salt." Well, when you do a ketogenic diet, and your body is going into the fat cell to remove the fat cell, it takes out the um, sodium, magnesium, potassium as well that's stored in there. So you need to add salts back into your. You need to salt your food. One of the things that a lot of people get, it's called the keto flu. And the reason for that is, is their electrolytes are go a little bit wonky. They lose too many because they're losing water weight. When your body switches to using the fat for fuel, it's dumping the water and the water is pulling out the minerals out of your system. So you have to replenish it. Now, if you are used to using the blue can with the little girl with the umbrella, that white chemically bleached, dead salt, you need to start using Himalayan pink salt, Redmond real salt, Celtic sea salt, sea salt, the ones that have not been colorized or stripped of color or bleached or any chemicals taken out of them. And you might want to get some electrolytes. We have several great electrolyte products out there. You can use electrolyte drops. Keto Chow makes a wonderful electrolyte drops. If you are not a salter and you don't want to taste salt, then get an electrolyte pill or tablet. They have one. If you want something that is flavored because you like, you want a little bit of raspberry or berry flavoring, use Redmond's Real Salt. Himalayan Pink Salt and Redmond Real Salt is mine. It is, it is an ancient seabed that is buried deep beneath Mother Earth. It's kept pristine. There's no nanoplastics or anything in it. And it is mined with all of the minerals intact that come with it. And that will help you get past your transition into the ketogenic, low carb lifestyle much easier, okay? Now, something else that may happen to you is you may get a rash. You may itch and get a rash. And that's because you have toxics built up in your system, toxins, and your body is flushing those out and they're coming out in a red rashy area. Give yourself some grace, give yourself some time, stick to it, and that rash will pass as well. It seems like you will get an oxalate flush if you were eating uh, like Carrie and I were. We were vegan and vegetarian. We ate a ton of spinach, a ton of plants that have oxalates in them. And unbeknownst to us, that was causing gut issues. That was causing all kinds of problems. But when you are flushing them out of your system, you can get a rash, right? It has nowhere to go. It's coming, it's erupting through your skin to get out. So 
That's the important part. Try to stay away from the white noise of all the other things that we have done to tweak the ketogenic diet. As you get to become a uh, uh, perfectionist to it and you find out what works for you and what foods you like, then you can start experimenting. But the easiest way to start is you eat protein, in the way of from the butcher area, you know, the meat frozen, not frozen meat section, but the meat section of your store, the beef, the lamb, the pork, right? You can have the cured bacons, the sausages. You just need to count the carbs on them. I read the bacon and I found one I like that has the least amount of carbs per serving. You get um, chicken, you get fowl, you get some shrimp if you like the shrimp, right? And you can Google, there are a plethora on Pinterest, on my channel, Pinterest and everywhere else, there are keto recipes that you can get out there. There are simple, easy recipes too. If you don't like to cook, you don't have time to cook. Um, we cook plain and simple recipes that are super easy, super simple, and that you can um, usually batch cook on a Saturday or Sunday if you work five days a week you have kids or family that you have to cook for too. It's nice because you can cook the main meat, the main part of that structure of the meal with a vegetable, with a salad, and then serve them whatever they want in addition to that and you can have your food too. It's gonna to be harder if you have children and you have a husband and they don't want to go on a ketogenic or a low carb lifestyle, but you'll be surprised. The more you settle in and the more you do this, the um, more you're gonna branch out and start experimenting with the recipes and the food and all of the good things. And they're gonna look at you and they're gonna see how well you're doing with that. And they're going to see um, the foods that you're eating and that's like, well, wait a minute. Well, Mom always said we had to eat margarine. And they taste that butter for the first time and they're, they're going, where was this heavenly yellow stuff all my life? And you're just going, well, I can, I can have butter on my string beans. Would you like some butter, right? You can have a cauliflower. You know, you can have a lot of different vegetables on your palate, what you like. If you don't like them, don't eat them, right? If you don't cook with garlic, don't cook with garlic. If you don't like onions, don't cook with onions. You can use spices and spice up your life, but you can also eat that delicious crispy fat when you barbecue that steak and there's that little bit of fat, that is heaven. And that is absolutely wonderful for you on a ketogenic diet. No more skinless, boneless chicken breasts with nothing on them next to a side of salad with a squeeze of lemon juice. You can have that same salad. You can put blue cheese dressing all over it. You can have chicken breast that has skin on it that you have seasoned with a little bit of garlic, a little bit of onion, a little bit of paprika. You've barbecued that thing and you've got a side a little mayonnaise aioli that you made and you can eat that instead. And you can wake up a half a pound thinner the next day. Especially in the beginning, you're gonna be losing your weight fast and you really have to stay hydrated and you need to have the salt and you wanna make sure you have your little salt chicker right there and you wanna shake your salt on your food. So those are the things that are most important. Get, a ri get rid of the fat, the white, the, what, the rice, the potatoes, right? The grains, the oatmeal, the cereals. Get rid of the seed oils, get the butter. Butter is better. If you look at my refrigerator, sorry, it might be a mess, but there's the butter back there. Oh yeah, sour cream. Heck yeah, eggs, heck yeah. I mean, seriously, nothing's better. And if you want to go out to eat, if you're in a hurry and you wanna go through the drive-through, most every single Wendy's, McDonald's, Carl's Jr., um, Hardee's, I'm trying to think of other fast foods. You just tell them you want the hamburger, no ketchup, and no bun. No ketchup, no bun. They'll say, would you like that protein style? And you say, yes, I would. in and out Burger, would you like that protein style? Yes, I would. No, hold the sauce. Sauce usually has a ketchup mix with it. And can I have a couple packages of mayonnaise and a couple packages of mustard with that? And you can go and eat a double baconator with cheese, at Wendy's. You can go to any 
restaurant and get a hamburger or bacon and egg. if a restaurant serves breakfast all day long you can get your eggs you can get your omelets just read what is in them and make sure that you are able to count that and count your carbs because carbs are not your friend fat and protein are your friend on the ketogenic diet and low carb lifestyle i hope that helps you guys i have a great facebook group it's called loving it on keto with wendy fans if you want to join a support group that has a great group of people that can help you out answer questions it's free for you to join you just type that out you answer three easy questions and you say hey i'm brand new to this give me some suggestions you know um help me out here because there are so many things that we have done out over the years. If you get into stalls and all those things, those, that's another chapter of the book. You, right now, you're, there's this huge Olympic pool in front of you. All I want you to do is walk down the three steps into the shallow end of the pool, and I want you to get your feet wet, and I want you to get comfortable with the feel of the water, right? getting comfortable with the ketogenic lifestyle and the food you're going to eat. I want you to go over to the edge of the pool. I want you to, you know, kick your feet, hold on to the edge of the pool. I want you to do that with the foods first before we dive into the deep end from the high dive and start getting super fancy smancy and doing all this, these tricks and things that are out there. Because you are going to find out that, like Harry and I, we choose not to eat vegetables with every meal. Matter of fact, we very rarely eat vegetables. If I want a salad on occasion, I will have one. My vegetables are more like a garnish. It could be a slice of onion or a slice of tomato if you like it for your hamburger, right? But if you need your salads, then have a big salad, have a Cobb salad, oh my gosh. If a restaurant has a Cobb salad, that's got bacon in it, that's got hard boiled eggs in it, that's got cheese in it, that's got chicken in it, that has avocado in it, heck yeah, hand the blue cheese dressing over to me and have fun with that. So there is a little bit of tweaking you can do, especially in the beginning because your body is not used to dieting and it will it doesn't know that we're going to be, you know, it's not going to get to here. You're not going to hit a wall or a stall right away, which is a good thing because this gives you time to play around in the shallow end. Kick your feet up, you know, and play in the shallow end. Figure out what you like to eat. Figure out some meals that are super easy, super simple. Figure out the meats you like. Cook them ahead of time. Batch them. All you have to do is heat them in the air fryer and go from there. You can cook your family's meal. You can grab a hamburger, some bacon that you've cooked, slab of, um, cheese, mayonnaise and mustard, sit down with a couple of pickles on the side, hard boiled egg, and you're good to go. Anyway, you guys, if you have any questions and you are brand new and you're new to my channel, please leave a comment below. I also have an email. It's loving it on keto with wendy at gmail.com and i'll be more than happy to answer questions for you because i want you to get started i want you to get healthy and hey you may make mistakes along the way but if you get rid of the white garbage carbage is what i call it the carbage the rice the potatoes the cereal the sugars and everything that comes with that and the seed oils that are nasty the canola oils the corn oils the crisco oils and you exchange those for good healthy vegetables that grow above the ground the green leafy vegetables you know the uh arugulas the field greens the cucumbers the zucchinis you want spaghetti get zoodles zucchini noodles and make your sauce and and put it on but make sure you count your carbs Anyway, you guys, I hope that answers your questions. This is something that is a little bit different, but it is the new year. We have a lot of folks that are out there wanting to start ketogenic journey, and I think that's the easiest way to do it. Also, um, hold please. I'm back because there, if there is one book that you had to read or you wanted to read, this about the ketogenic lifestyle, this would be the book that I would suggest. I did not read it, I did not write it, but it is a fabulous, easy book. 
it's got wonderful information, especially for people beginning the ketogenic diet, and that is End Your Carb Confusion by Dr. Eric Westman and Amy Berger. It is a simple guy to customize your carb intake for optimal health. This is an excellent book to get. I would tune out everything. I wouldn't grab eight books ahead of time and try to read all of the different ones. I would get one. It would be this one. And I would use this as my Bible in the beginning because they go through the whys. They get scientific, but they also give you a phase one food list that explains why you would eat that food, how much of that food to eat, and all of the choices that you have in that area. So I think to start the ketogenic diet, I would get this book. You can get this on audio. I think you can get this on Amazon. Maybe not audio, but I would check to see if it comes up. And then I would get this book and I would read it. And I would refer back to this as you go. Anyway, it's down in the description below. We have a Amazon store link and a no additional cost to you. You can go on there and find it, but Harry's gonna link this right above in the description below. So you can click on that link and go buy it through Amazon. Um, I don't know if bon Barnes and Nobles carries it or your local bookstore may carry it. I'm just an Amazon girl. Super easy, super simple, and you can get it. Anyway, folks, I hope this helps you on your ketogenic journey. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our family, Loving It on Keto family, and I hope that this information has been valuable to you. If so, would you please remember to like, subscribe, ring that little bell, give us a thumbs up, and we'll see you right here tomorrow. Sally comes in and says, good night. Just say good night. Say good night. Good girl. Okay. She's a carnivore girl. There you go. Go on. Oh, she's not gonna run away. No. <laughs>